Thank you very much for joining us today. We're with Angie Muckle-Jabbar, who is Chief of Staff to the Congresswoman from the U.S. Virgin Islands, Stacey Plaskett. Uh, Angie, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you um, for having me. Uh, it, even despite that we're really in between New Year's and Christmas and you're, you're still with us. So can you tell us a little bit about your office and, and how you are staffed during the holidays? Well, um, <clears throat> we have three offices, as you know, in uh, DC, St. Thomas and St. Croix. Uh, during the holidays, uh, we've continued to staff on a staggered schedule as we began during the summer. Um, we've been working, as you know, Congress is still in session um, because we just passed the COVID bill, um, the COVID and the government funding bill, but there's still the issue with the direct payments. And um, the Senate still wants to do something about increasing the direct payments. So we've, I feel like we've been on call <laughs> during the holidays. That's the best way to um, explain it. Um, Congress has been on a call, so we've continued our staggered schedule in our offices. Um, some folks are on vacation, but they're still on call also. And then since we're still working virtually, it's almost like, you know, there's a gray line between being on vacation and working because you're at home, but which you're supposed to be on vacation, but you're still working from home anyway. So it's like, what's the difference, right? Right, right. So we've it been has... pretty busy. As yes. a matter of fact, um, the 117th Congress, excuse me, starts this Sunday. I don't know if you knew that, but members will be sworn in this Sunday on January 3rd. So um, Congresswoman Plaskett will be in the office. Uh, I will be in the office, along with probably another colleague. We try not to do more than two staffers at a time um, every day so that we don't have a full staff. Some people still come in anyway, but um, con um, Congress does have rapid testing. So people have been testing to make sure that everyone's safe. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, yes. So the Congresswoman was reelected. Yeah. Uh, I, I did see a picture of you ah, campaigning. Can you, you tell us a little bit? That? I well, did. You know, <laughs> that I, I try to, you know, on campaign day, there's a lot of tension, especially for the Congresswoman, because she has to travel um, inter-island. She has okay. to go to St. Croix, St. Thomas, and then back to St. Croix for the election, uh, for the results. So, and she has to do different stops at polls. Uh, when she stopped at our poll, um, at that particular poll, things weren't exactly the way she wanted it. So just to break tension, I did a little twirling with the sign, <laughs> which I had never done before. I've twirled with a baton many, many years ago. So I'm, I'm glad that it brought some levity <laughs> to a very long day. Yeah, I try to bring levity in the office, you know. Yes. We work long hours and sometimes things can get pretty intense. Right. So I try to create a little bit of levity. <laughs> um, so okay. tell me about um, when the Congresswoman will be sworn in again, the 117th Congress. Can you give us a visual, what that looks like? Uh, is that on the... You know, the um, uh, well, first, um, um, also on January 3rd, um, the Congressional Black Caucus uh, will air their sworn in. They did it virtually, so all members of the Congressional Black Caucus filmed their um, swearing in, and they okay. sent it to the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation, and they put together a virtual swearing in and swearing in, and that will air on January third on TV One. Um, I forgot nice. the time, but that will also be on Sunday. Okay. Um, at noon on Sunday, the House will uh, be in session. Members will be sworn in. I don't have the specifics, but for votes, members will still be called um, by groups like the been doing um, since the pandemic. They also have to vote for the Speaker of the House. So um, that's the sworn in and voting for the Speaker of the House will take place on Sunday. And that will begin at noon. 
And so that will all be virtual? Everybody is recording or they're coming no, to the floor? No, that part will not be, be virtual. Okay. Members, all members of Congress are required to come in on Sunday. Okay. Um, but they've been voting by proxy, but there will not be proxy voting this Sunday okay. for the beginning of the session. So okay. everyone's required to come in, but they will continue to vote in groups so that everyone is not in at the same time. I, see. Um, I can't remember how the swearing in will go, but um, we're still waiting for details on that. So you can okay. view it um, on C-SPAN. Okay. Um, which, you know, carries okay. the uh, legislative session, session for Congress. So you okay. can watch it on C-SPAN. Maybe CNN will carry it, but I'm certain C-SPAN will. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the Congresswoman is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. And what other organizations is she also a part of uh, or committees well, on the Hill? Oh, yeah. So she's also um, a co-chair of the Caribbean Caucus, the Congressional Caribbean Caucus. She's also on the New Dems um, and, and a few other caucuses too. But in terms of committees for the 116th Congress, she sits on the um, <clears throat> Committee on Agriculture and she also um, chairs the subcommittee on um, biotechnology and horticulture. And then she sits on the um, Committee on Oversight and Reform. And she also sits on the Transportation Committee. Uh, that's for the 116th wow. Congress. Right. For the 117th Congress, um, she was nominated to be assigned to the House, to this um, exclusive committee of the House Ways and Means Committee. Wow. So um, we, since it's an exclusive committee, uh, members are only supposed to be on that one committee. That's one of the exclusive committees, Ways and Means, um, also Appropriations. Um, so I'm not sure if she's going to get a waiver maybe for one other committee. We're still discussing that internally. Mm -hmm. um, why is that exclusive? Is it because of the work that's involved? Is there so much work It's involved? because of the work that's involved. It's um, one of the oldest committees in Congress. Also, we have the um, Appropriations Committee that appropriates the money, but Ways and Means generates the, the money to be appropriated. So there's um, a lot of um, activity dealing with revenue. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's um, very exciting. And it, I, I'm yeah. not sure, but it may be the first time that uh, one of our delegates it from is. any of the insular it areas. It is. It, it, you know, I get goosebumps Amazing. every time yes. I think about it because, yes. you know, when we sat around, first of all, Congresswoman Plaskett is always wanting to do more. You know, she always aspires to do more. And when we sat around the table discussing, well, what are we going to do for the 117th Congress? What is going to be my legacy? Uh, and we looked at all the committees that she's been on, all the other committees that she's not been on. Mm -hmm. And we, look, we said, well, let's try for ways and means. You know, yeah. um, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? Right. So uh, wow. we tried it and uh, we did it. You know, Amazing. Congratulations. I'm, I'm, thank yes. you. I'm just so proud of her. I'm, I'm so proud for the U.S. territories. Um, we have fought for so long to be considered fully and equally in the U.S. Congress, right. um, even though we don't have um, a full vote all of the time. So yes. this is very, very important for us. And yes. we hope to do a lot of work, not just for the Virgin Islands, but for the U.S. territories. I mean, you know, our, our revenue for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands has generated a lot from the rum industry. So yes. that's very important. Um, our health, our Medicaid issues are important. So yes. all of that, you know, starts from ways and means. Excellent. Um, please tell me, Angie, how does that look to day to day for you in terms of your work? Can you tell us a little bit about what that means for you on the ground? Uh, I know the Congresswoman comes to the meetings and is, is in the meetings, but I, I know that the role you play is, is essential. Can you please give us a little yeah. bit of insight? Um, sure. As Chief of Staff, I've not, well, before Chief of Staff, I was Legislative Director. 
So I did a lot of committee work, but as chief of staff now, uh, I think uh, January will be um, one full year since I've been chief of staff. I've wow. tried to stay away from committee work, but I mm -hmm. still need to know what's going on in the committees. And my right. legislative background has helped a lot um, because um, knowing what goes on in the committees, I know right. what to expect <clears throat> from the committees and from my staff. Uh, now with Ways and Means, I will probably um, have more involvement in the committee. I think the Congressman is expecting that, but uh, we also have a legislative director, Jeffrey Noel, and he will uh, work with the committee a lot also. Right. Um, so I think I will be involved on a day-to-day -day basis with what's going on in Ways and Means. I've already started to. Right. Um, there's a lot to learn. But then I also have my chief of staff role, which is managing the office and everything yes. else. So, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to determine and we'll see on a day-to-day -day basis how I um, balance all of that. Yes. How many, um, how, many, how many staff do you have in the DC office and also in the offices in, in the VI? I think total we have, um, let me see, I believe it's 14 staff. Oh. Um, in the DC office, we have, I think, seven or eight. Um, in St. Thomas, we have three. And in St. Croix, we also have three and one wounded warrior fellow. So oh, that okay. makes four. So, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so do you have to then travel um, frequently to, well, now with COVID, maybe you're doing more virtual work. Meetings. Right, we do more virtual work. I was there at the end of October, um, beginning of November, and um, I'm not sure when I will travel again, but I'm sure it will probably be before the spring. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned a wounded warrior fellow, which makes me think of um, the military. The military, can, yes. How, how is the, can you tell us about the Virgin Islands and service in the military and, and how that looks? Yes, well, the <laughs> veterans and military is very important to us because per capita, we have, uh, you know, a large amount of folks serving in the military, just not in the Virgin Islands, but in the entire territory because um, a lot of our residents choose not to go to college, but probably go to the military first. So um, the wounded, we learned about the Wounded Warrior Program. Um, the territories are eligible to participate. And um, we have one, she's been working with us now for over six months. And she's been incredible liaison with our veterans community. Um, and she's just, become an integral part of our um, office. But we want to expose them more, um, not just to veterans, but also to policy, um, to legislation, um, to bring all of those different elements into service to our veterans. Uh, we work really hard with our veterans because we do not have a veterans hospital in the Virgin Islands. Our veterans have to travel to Puerto Rico or to Florida right. to get medical right. care. So that's something that we've been working on to improve also. So yes. um, our military uh, servicemen and veterans need a lot of help there. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I believe the VA um, system in the Puerto Rico VI area is one of the largest, but you're still far away. <laughs> If you're right. in the VI and you don't have a hospital nearby. Right, and you still have to travel. And even though Puerto Rico is uh, not far, just the inconvenience of um, either being sick and having to travel or, right. you know, mm -hmm. uh, the cost of it, which is in a reimbursement basis. It's so Angie, let's um, spin back a little bit to earlier. How did you um, first get started? Uh, where did you go to school? Uh, where are you from in the Virgin Islands? And how did you get started it's many moons ago <laughs> <laughs> you don't look it <laughs> thank you thank you you know god is uh, god is with me in terms of health and i guess aging <laughs> um gracefully um so i many years ago i 
came to Washington, D.C. to attend Howard University. I graduated uh, with a bachelor's degree in political science and a minor in English. And then I started working for the U.S. Department of Labor after that. And I started law school. I went to Georgetown Law, okay. graduated. Um, I clerked in the Virgin Islands um, in, on St. Croix in Superior Court. Court came back and started working for Congressman Donna Christensen, yes. our former uh, delegate to Congress, yes. and uh, I worked with Dwayne. And then um, Congresswoman Christensen decided to work and run for governor. So okay. she um, gave up her role as a member of Congress. And when she was not uh, elected as governor, I worked for Mayor Bowser for a few mm -hmm. months and then came back to Congress to work for Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett okay. as her legislative director. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you actually worked for the mayor as well. When, yes. Okay. Yes. In the mayor's office. In the mayor's office. Yeah. Um, did that give you a different perspective? What kind of perspective did that give you from the, the district versus a territory, you know, a territory? Well, in, in terms of the perspective, very similar. Very similar um, because the district is also not a state. Yes. So um, it gave me a lot of um, insight as to how similar their problems are to the Virgin mm -hmm. Islands. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, I don't think people realize the role that national parks play in Washington, D.C. itself, mm -hmm. in the District of Columbia, not just our monuments but within the District of Columbia itself, you know, with uh, the parks that are in the local residence and different land. Um, so, you know, that was an interesting perspective also. So interior plays a very big role with the District of Columbia, not just with the monuments in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, it gave me a, a very, um, you know, better understanding of how the district works. Um, mm -hmm. The weight that the district carries is incredible. I mean, having to, um, you know, be responsible for services for people who work in the District of Columbia from Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a, it's a big burden for the District of Columbia. Right. Um, it, are, when you talk about the burden, are you talking about also transportation? What kind? What can you explain that? Infrastructure, public safety. I wouldn't say it's a. Well, it can be a financial burden because they do need the money, but it's a lot of weight right. for um, an area that's not a state, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's right. smaller than all the other states. So how long then have you now been working for the for Congresswoman Plaskett? For Congresswoman Plaskett since 2015. Okay. Uh -huh. In uh, Congress just generally for, um, I'd say, um, over 20 years now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's when you, uh, you're becoming the expert now. <laughs> No, it, it, it's an expert. You know, you learn every, every Congress is different. Right. You learn something new every day. Yes. I don't purport to know everything, yes. um, but it's, you know, it, it, you learn every day. And exactly. in my different roles and capacities, I've learned um, different things. Even after 20 years. It's even, amazing. After 20 years. <laughs> even after 20 years. Um, tell me a little bit, if you could, about the, the recent COVID and funding bill that, that Congress just passed. So now there's another bill, uh, there's another movement to increase this, this, the COVID funding from 600 to 2,000. The direct could, payments, yes. The direct payments. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? What does that look like in terms of your office and voting? Well, we definitely support um, the increase to to 2,000, um, 600 was very, it was a nominal direct payment. Um, you know, it's very hard to go from 1,200 to 600 because mm -hmm. the issue and um, the hardship and the challenges, have, they've not changed. If anything, they've become even more because they've lasted longer. Right. Um, so we do support that. Um, 
a congresswoman was not able to, she does not vote on final passage of okay. a bill. And there were no amendments to that um, bill, right? But we do support it, the Democrats do support it. Um, the Senate tried to pass it uh, yesterday by UC unanimous consent, okay. but um, Senator McConnell blocked that. So now uh, Senator Schumer, Bernie Sanders, they're hoping to actually bring it to a vote. And it's okay. my understanding that um, in the meantime, Treasury is going ahead and distributing the 600 direct payments. So I people see. should expect to see that in their bank accounts between today and next week. Okay. I'm thinking that since they went ahead and distribute the 600, that if they bring it to a vote, and if they do pass it, it may not be the 2000, it may be 1400. The difference between the 600 and the 2000, it seems like that would make sense. Yes. But it's just a wait and see. Um, I think the back and forth is very unfortunate because mm -hmm. we're really just gambling with people's lives, people's emotions, right. you know, so. So this bill that, that we're taught, the direct payments is literally only that. That's the only thing in the bill. Well, my understanding is that Mr. Um, Senator McConnell wants to bring it to a vote and include other um, provisions in the bill. I don't think that he wants to just do the direct payments. It seems like he wants to bring other I provisions see. that that still the senators do not agree upon. So. Yeah. I see. So that would explain the unanimous consent versus bringing, vote. bringing a bill to a vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, you touched upon the congresswoman <clears throat> from the territory, the territories and D.C., but we'll focus on the territories, not having a, a vote in Congress. Could you explain that a little bit more? Yeah. Well, it's actually, it, it, it goes back and forth. When the Democrats are in office, that's the first bill that they get that they pass. They give oh. the delegates the right to vote in um, committee of a whole, um, meaning that they vote on amendments, but not on final passage of the bill. When the Republicans are um, in control, that's the first thing that they take away from us. So, you know, it just flip flops depending on, on who is and, in And this is something that's been happening every Congress? Pretty much, yes. Ah, okay. Because mm -hmm. I've, I've seen it in the news a couple of times, but uh, but it's interesting to, to think that it, it this is actually something that goes on every Congress. Every Congress. It's unfortunate. Okay. And, you know, um, I hope for the day when we have it permanently and not, you know, just given and taken away. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me, uh, in your work on the Hill, how often do you work with the executive branch? Um, pretty often, but we work mostly through the agencies okay. and um, their issues. Rarely do we have to go directly to the White House, but um, if we do, we will. Uh, yes. They're congressional liaisons. Yes. And now with the um, Biden team, uh, we, uh, we will be working with folks who actually worked on the Hill, who will be right. in the White House as congressional liaisons. So our accessibility and our connection to the White House will be even greater now with this administration. So I, I see us working closer with the executive branch, okay. not just because of the party that's in power, but because of the people who will be there. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And um, you mentioned agencies. So I know you work with Interior. Um, so you just, you work with Labor, uh, probably Treasury, I'm thinking with rum cover over taxes. Treasury, um, HUD, because of the 2017 hurricanes. Yes. And um, oh, FEMA, FEMA, Homeland right. Security has been a big one since uh, 2017. Um, and uh, there was one other one, um, how, uh, HHS, um, so basically all of them. Mm -hmm. Speaking of HHS, you mentioned Medicaid. Can you elaborate a little bit on the, the issue of Medicaid for the, for the territory? 
Well, one of the things um, and one of the accomplishments that we were able to achieve um, this 116 cars was avert the Medicaid clip, which um, yes. for the U.S. territories and that funding uh, came to an end, I believe it was in uh, 2018, uh, September of 2018. Um, so we were able to get more funding to avert that. We were able to get increased funding also because of the 2017 hurricanes. Um, yes. Those territories are treated differently um, than the rest of the U.S. when it comes to Medicaid funding. Would you like to share um, any other accomplishments that big accomplishments uh, that I know there's the work is every day and sometimes you're working behind the scenes and they don't always come out publicly. Um, but are there any other big items that you'd like to bring to our awareness? That, right. That when we're discussing voting um, <laughs> at the beginning of the 116th Congress, one of the first legislations that was passed was HR1 uh, for the people, which was the election reform bill. And in that bill, uh, we were able to get an amendment uh, to create a task force to study the voting, full and equal voting rights of the U.S. territories. Um, okay. That was a big accomplishment. Um, averting the Medicaid cliff yes. was a big accomplishment. And um, everything is not done legislatively because it takes so long to pass bills, but some of the accomplishments are done behind the scenes, working with the agencies, working with the committees. <clears throat> we were able to get a lot of um, waivers uh, for disaster funding mm -hmm. as well and increased funding for disaster relief. So um, those were some of our major accomplishments during the 116th. For the 117th, as I mentioned, um, being on Ways and Means um, yes. is a major accomplishment for us. I think the Congresswoman will be focused on our economic recovery, not continuing the economic recovery from the 2017 hurricanes, but then also from COVID. So we have two recoveries to deal with in yes. uh, the U.S. territories. Right. So that will be our main focus. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, if you had any uh, other job in D.C., where might you, this is kind of more a light question, but if, is to, in, your, in your travels throughout your work, is there any other area that you would be, say, could you would be interested to work in if you could? <laughs> well, you know, um, it's really interesting because uh, while in DC, we know living in DC is expensive, and, but um, even throughout college and throughout my career, I've always done retail. Mm -hmm. I've always liked uh, fashion consulting. Ah, okay. And <laughs> okay. So that would probably be styling. That Yes, styling, yes. Being a stylist. Oh, okay. <laughs> it has nothing to do with policy, <laughs> legislation, nothing <laughs> at all. But that's, uh, that's being a stylist is one of uh, my uh, okay. little side things that I like. Yes. To. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Thank oh, I like you. cooking also. Okay. <laughs> I enjoy cooking. I was um, a sous chef to a very good friend of mine who owned a catering um, company before. So I used to be a sous chef. Wow. So um, I love cooking. Wow. I love eating. Yes. I love good food. Yes. So, um, is there a particular uh, food from the VI that you would recommend? Oh. Um, from the VI itself, I love red pea soup. Okay. That's a Virgin Islands cuisine, right? Ah. Um, and then I'm um, half Puerto Rican and ah. half Persian, so I have to recommend Puerto Rican food too. <laughs> My favorite is arroz con pollo. Ah. So I, I just love that. So that, that would be my two favorite meals. Oh one would be gosh. red pea soup, the other one would be arroz con pollo. Okay. Oh, so yeah. you have a Puerto Rico connection as well. I do. I do. Okay. I do. Now, were you were you raised in I've in Puerto Rico? Both. Or the, in both. Both. Yes. My okay. parents met in Ponce, Puerto Rico. My mother 
was from Puerto Rico, my dad from St. Croix. Okay. Um, when they married and I was born, they both went to Catholic University in ah. Ponce, Puerto Rico. Okay. And then after they got married and I was born, they moved back to St. Croix. Our um, current assistant secretary uh, has Puerto Rico ties as well. Right. I think yes. he was raised there for also or something. Yeah, sometime, a, a little bit. Mm -hmm. of, I think in the younger years. Yeah. And, and I think he mentioned also, because our policy director, of course, is from the VI as well. And he... Mm -hmm. Uh, mentioned that he would go to the VI and they would play games. They would compete. Yeah. Schools. Yeah. They would have school yeah. competitions. For sports. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he, uh, he, he, pl he went to a school in Puerto Rico by the name of Antilles. <laughs> and then when he come to the VI, he played Antilles as well. <laughs> oh, there was one, there's a school in Puerto Rico, Antilles? Really? Yeah, yeah, that's what oh. he would say all the time, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, well, you know, I just want to say our office, uh, you know, Dwayne is, is new to our office. Our office is, uh, we, we handle, mo well, we handle all the, the three U.S. territories that are in the Pacific, and then the one U.S. territory that's in the Virgin Islands, uh, that's, that's in the Caribbean, the Virgin Islands. And uh, so with Dwayne on board, we've, we've had a lot more help to focus and bring attention to the, to the Caribbean side because admittedly the office is definitely very Pacific heavy. Um, so I just wanted to say and anything that we can do to help um, bring more attention to the VI and, and hopefully this interview is one and we'd like to do many more. We yeah. uh, interviewed your director, the governor's director of communications, uh, Richard Mota. Oh, Richard. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. I, you know, Richard is uh, like a brother to me. We <laughs> work together in Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett's office. Yes. I am so incredibly yes. uh, proud of Richard, not just because of the work that he does and the person yes. that he is. He's a father of two now. Oh, He's got nice. Two beautiful kids, and oh, nice. I'm just so proud of them. But I, <laughs> but Dwayne too. I'm very proud of Dwayne. Dwayne is I consider him um, one of our prodigies. Uh, he worked in Congresswoman Stacy Plaskett's office. Donna. Uh, I mean, nice. I mean, in, in Donna's <laughs> office, yes. You, you know, it, I hear from him so much, it's almost like he works with us, too. But, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> but, but yeah, he, he learned a lot from uh, working with uh, Congresswoman Donna Christensen. And yes. I'm just so proud of all of his accomplishments. And, um, yes. and I think he still listens to me. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> I do. Even when I'm screaming at him. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Because I, I know it's, it's, it's from love. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, Virgin Islander, I'm a Virgin Islander. So, you know, my, my efforts and my interest comes because I want to help the people. I want to help where I come from, too. So mm -hmm. I enjoy working with Angie and, <laughs> and Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett office in, in whatever we can. And I look forward to working with them in the 117th Congress as well. So, yes. Angie, don't ignore my calls. Oh, I don't ever. <laughs> Dwayne and I, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne knows sometimes it gets hectic. Sometimes I'm yeah. responding yeah. to Dwayne at midnight, at 11 right. o'clock. Wow. <laughs> Dwayne, <laughs> Dwayne, that's late. Yeah, yes, it's, it's when I can respond, you right. know. It's she, always, she always gets back to me. I, I will say, Angie always gets back to me. Unlike some other offices, Angie, she may take a while, but she gets back to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fantastic. We did also have an interview with Adrian uh, Ottolin. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, Adrian Williams Ottolin, and with the Office Adrian of Disaster for a Recovery. Long time now, yeah. Oh, good, good. Mm -hmm. And she, she was does. giving us some insight into the the disaster recovery, which was which was eye opening. Oh, wow. She has just her hands full, yes. you know, with going through the bureaucracy with uh, FEMA um, to getting our schools rebuilt, our yeah. hospitals. I mean, you know, we're, we're still in that phase. We're yes. still in that phase and dealing with COVID. I mean, my heart and everything goes out to Adrian and we as a matter of fact, I think we have a meeting with her coming up next week, but, you know, we offer her whatever support we can give because it's a yes. lot of work. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and Angie, do you have any uh, last minute thoughts you'd like to share with uh, our, our viewers and with us in general? Mm, I, you know, I want to wish everyone really a 
happy new year, a healthy new year. I encourage everyone to stay optimistic. I think we're going to get through this. I mean, I too have my moments where, oh my God, I can't take this anymore. Can't take this for the next six months um, or next day, but um, remain prayerful, hopeful, and uh, just hang in there. We'll get through this and hopefully next year we'll be able to see each other again in person. Um, you know, if everyone does what they're supposed to do um, in terms of exercising the protocols, um, hopefully everyone will take the vaccine to protect themselves and others. And uh, we will get back to normal soon and we can support each other through this. Yes. Congratulations again to, to you, the Congresswoman on re-election, on uh, membership on the Ways and Means Committee. Uh, we'll be looking forward and watching and, and seeing where we can highlight and help support in any way. Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Um, you know, I know it's not easy. We, we deal with a lot of issues that are very controversial. Um, and um, I don't have to name them, but we know them. Okay. So we're hoping to get through those also for um, the sake of um, all the residents of the Virgin Islands and our economy. So um, we're just looking forward to working together and getting through this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Angie. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Philip.